to the states now where the campaign for Kamala is just becoming so miserable. Can you imagine being one of her staffers right now? <laughs> Here's former campaign manager for Obama back in the day speaking to mainstream media, explaining what these guys are up against, the names they're being called, and how Team Spirit is at an all-time low on Team Kamala. So there's really difficult decisions being made in Wilmington right now about what you do with her time, what you do with the surrogate's time. You know, there's competing things. The, the press team wants her on these TV interviews. The fundraising team wants her to do one more big event in X city. The battleground states are saying we've got to have her three more times in Michigan. And so, you know, making those decisions becomes the most important thing. It's why you see these campaign people on TV and they look absolutely exhausted mm -hmm. because everyone is telling them they're a band of idiots and you, they should do it their way. <laughs> She's also notoriously hard to work for. When she took the VP office back in 2021, since then, the people that she hired, 92% of them have left. It's an unprecedentedly high turnover rate in the VP's office, Joe. This is just embarrassing. And now we're hearing about how beleaguered they are. There's always been claims of bullying and how it's such a toxic workplace yep. as these staffers have been leaving her office. Yep. So Disgruntled employees all round. And now these guys, given how she's performing in the polls, so close to the election, you can imagine how they're feeling. It was just extraordinary. Well, the, the most amazing thing about that clip is you had Jen Psaki, who is the former White House yes. spokesman for Biden, looking like <laughs> the worst possible smell had just descended <laughs> in the air. <laughs> Talking about her beloved Dems in Talking such a and, disparaging and, and that's, way. That's right. And I think she um, she probably would have had some knowledge of dealing with Kamala uh, mm. firsthand. Oh, I, yeah. imagine, I imagine it's a lot like the sitcom Veep. Um, which is pretty much a documentary for anyone who's worked in it politics. Um, the best, you know, from, you know, having sort of reported on New South Wales politics in the sort of dying days of the last long-term Labor government there, you just... The, the biggest indicator of crisis is staff turnover, bar none. The biggest indicator of someone who is a rampant narcissist with no capacity to actually do the job is staff turnover, like yeah. daylight and second. And what they and say walking out the door can be very enlightening. And that 92%, quite a few of them walking out the door said she doesn't want to be advised mm. and she won't read briefing documents. We can tell. That explains <laughs> a whole lot of speeches and a whole lot of interviews. She hasn't read any briefing documents and she hasn't listened to any advice. And yes. we all know that she's absolutely terrible without an auto cue, and this was made painfully obvious at a town hall meeting recently where we all know the point of a town hall is to get questions from the audience. It's a very one-on-one -on -one experience. People are supposed to feel like, oh, I'm getting to know this person. And they're so accessible. This is marvellous. Well, check out what the audience was told when one of them asked, when do we get to ask questions of Kamala? You're not, unfortunately. We have some predetermined uh, questions, and I hopefully I'll be able to ask some of the questions that might be in your head. I hope so. <laughs> You're just here to shut up and listen to pre-planned <laughs> questions that she's been given in advance and her team have prepared answers for her. Well, much like Kel said, I don't think she'd read the brief, because this town hall was an absolute <laughs> schmozzle of word salad <laughs> after word salad. Here's one short, painful clip for your delectation and delight. We cannot despair. We cannot despair. You know, the nature of a democracy is such that I think there's a duality. On the one hand, there's an incredible strength when our democracy is intact. An incredible strength in what it does to protect the freedoms and rights of its people. Oh, there's great strength in that. And it is very fragile. It is only as strong as our willingness to fight for it. <laughs> what are you saying? 
what are you talking yeah. about? Do you even know, lady? This was so painful, <laughs> Kel. I watched more than that, and I, I was spoiled for choice in picking a clip to play tonight to demonstrate just how bad she is when she's not reading off an order cue. She's actually trying to do what are called platitudes. That is really nice sounding phrases that every like motherhood and apple pie and everyone will just nod their heads. Ah, yes, 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 they're nice. Things. So she's trying to do platitudes, platitudes, <laughs> <laughs> platitudes, <laughs> platitudes, something like that. She's trying to say, come out with nice platitudes that everyone will agree with, but she mangles them. She can't make it coherent. The sentence starts over here, wanders up there, goes down there a bit, and then doesn't reach a conclusion. And it, it's so painful to watch Liz Cheney's face throughout <laughs> this whole thing. <laughs> show. She's just like, this right. woman would fail finger painting. That's I, right, that's I right. Can't, I can't stomach this.